What up everybody? Back again here with our geometry unit. We are talking about attributes of quadrilaterals today. So let's shape up and see what our objective is today. Our objective today. Today I will be able to identify the different quadrilaterals by looking at their attributes. Let's start with some math vocabulary here. So we have a common understanding of the language that I'll be using throughout these lessons. So the first one is an attribute. An attribute is a feature that describes a shape. Okay, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second. Congruent, congruent means the exact same. We're going to be referring to this word as we describe attributes of different things, but an example of congruency outside of math would be these twins right here, okay? Opposed to these two brothers who are not congruent. They are not the exact same, while these twins are the exact same. And our last math vocabulary word is a polygon. A polygon is a two-dimensional closed shape made with straight lines. So the attributes to be considered a polygon are a two-dimensional shape. That means you have length and width, right? So we think of that as being flat, kind of like flat Stanley. Closed shape, okay, that means the lines are connected. Um, if you were a dog, you couldn't run out of here. Made with straight lines. So here we have some examples of two-dimensional shapes, right? They're flat. Let's look at each one to see if they have the attributes that qualify them to be a polygon. This figure is out because it's not a closed shape, right? It would have to be closed to be considered a polygon, but it wasn't. This circle's out because it does not have the attribute of being made with straight lines, right? A circle, by definition, is round, so this cannot be a polygon. Here we have a three-sided polygon, okay? It's a closed shape, it's two-dimensional, and it's made with straight lines, so this is a polygon. This is also a polygon because it is a... 2D closed shape made with straight lines, and this one is as well. So the definition of a polygon is a two-dimensional closed shape made with straight lines. We're going to be referring to shapes that are polygons, so I want you to keep this in the back of your mind as we go throughout these lessons. Now before we move ahead, we are going to rewind and look at things we have learned in previous lessons. So here we have polygons, right? And we know a polygon is a two-dimensional closed shape made with straight lines. So each of these meet these requirements. And you all know a triangle, a quadrilateral, a pentagon, and a hexagon. All right. So all of these have the attributes to be called a polygon. But there's something that makes them each different. There's a reason this one is a triangle and this one is a quadrilateral. They have other different attributes that also describe them. So to be a triangle, not only do you have to be a polygon, but you have to be a polygon that has three sides and vertices, okay? Vertices are where two lines meet. So if you have three sides, you're also going to have three vertices. To be a quadrilateral, you have to have the attributes of a polygon, but then you also have to have the attribute of having four sides and four vertices. Pentagon, same thing, except you'll have to have the attribute of having five sides and five vertices. And then the hexagon, of course, the six-sided and six vertices are the attribute that makes it a hexagon. So you, have, you know these different shapes already. They're polygons, and then they're each different because they had different attributes. You know the triangle, the quadrilateral, the pentagon, and the hexagon. Let's zoom in now on the quadrilaterals and look at that today. So we just zoomed in, right? And we have quadrilaterals right here. And we know to be a quadrilateral, you have to be a polygon, but you have to have exactly four sides and four vertices. But there, just like there was more than one polygon, right? There's a triangle, the quadrilateral, the pentagon, and the hexagon. There's more than one type of quadrilateral. The two main ones are the parallelogram and the trapezoid. Both of these have the attributes of four sides and four vertices, which makes them a quadrilateral, but they also have something very specific to them that makes this a parallelogram and this a trapezoid. A parallelogram has exactly two pairs of sides that will never meet if they keep going. 
what we mean by that, so here we have opposite sides, and if we kept these opposite sides going on forever and ever and ever, they would never meet and they would never get any closer. Okay, so this is one pair. And then the other sides are also the same, where if they got further and further and further away from each other, they would never meet. Now, I made mine a little bit crooked because that's because I'm not perfect, but if these lines continued, they would never get any closer or any farther. The vocabulary term you're going to learn for that later in your math life is parallel. Okay, and you can see that down at the bottom. But you don't need to know that term yet. I just always want to keep pushing you guys to continue to grow your brain. What parallel means is that if you kept the lines going on forever and ever and ever, they would never get any closer or any further. So a parallelogram has exactly two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel sides. So again, here, if you see these opposite sides, for they're not touching right now, but if they kept going on forever and ever and ever, they would eventually touch. Okay. This pair of opposite sides are not parallel, but if you look at these two sides would never meet if they continued to go on forever and ever and ever. Okay. So a trapezoid has exactly one pair and a parallelogram has exactly two pairs. So these are different attributes that separate the parallelogram and the trapezoid. Now if we keep going, there's no other types of trapezoids. Okay, now it might be drawn a different way, but it'll still be a trapezoid. There are different types of parallelograms. They are called the rectangle and the rhombus. So a rectangle and a rhombus both have the attributes of being a parallelogram. If you notice, the two opposite sides are never going to meet if they keep going on for never and ever and ever. And this side would never meet if they kept going on for never and ever and ever. Same thing for the rhombus. Four sides make it a quadrilateral, but it's also has the attributes of a parallelogram because the opposite sides are never going to meet. But these also have special attributes that make them different. A rectangle has the attributes of opposite sides being congruent, okay, remember the exact same, and it has four square corners. Let me show you what I mean by that. So opposite sides being congruent mean they're the exact same, they're the exact same length. If this side of the rectangle is five centimeters, this side would also be five centimeters. They're the exact same length. If this side of my rectangle was three centimeters, the opposite side would also be three centimeters. So your opposite sides are congruent. They're the exact same. But that's not the only thing rectangles have to have. They also have to have four square corners. That means the two sides meet, and really what they're forming is called a right angle, but you don't need to know that right now. Um, but if you do know it, that's awesome. But what it's really saying is a right angle is a square corner. You could fit a square perfectly into that corner. So if you look at this, you can see the rectangle has four square corners. Okay, so that's what makes it different from a parallelogram. Yes, it still has exactly two pairs of sides that are never going to meet, but the opposite sides are congruent and it has four square corners. The rhombus is different from the rectangle because obviously it has no square corners. You couldn't fit a square perfectly into any of those, but really what makes a rhombus a rhombus is that all four sides are congruent. Each side is the exact same length as all the other sides. That's what is, that's the attribute that makes a rhombus a rhombus. You can't be called a rhombus unless you have all four sides that are congruent. And if we keep going, there's one more quadrilateral, and many of you guys know already what it's called, and it is the square. But what makes a square a square? Why is something called a square and not a rectangle, right? So the square has some attributes that make it special. All four sides are congruent, just like the rhombus, and then it also has four square corners, just like the rectangle, okay? So if you notice the arrows, the arrows come from the rhombus and the rectangle. That's because a square is kind of like a combination between a rhombus and a rectangle. It has the four square corners, like the rectangle, and then all four sides are congruent, like the rhombus. That's where the arrows come from both. So it shares attributes with both of these. So if we go back up, everything underneath quadrilaterals has four sides. It all has the attribute to be called a quadrilateral. 
but then each shape has different attributes that make them different. So let's take this information in the attributes of each quadrilateral and let's put it to work in our I do problem. So my question says, how many quadrilaterals are in this group of shapes? So in other words, we're looking for which shapes have the attributes of a quadrilateral. The attribute we're looking for is four sides. That's what it means to be a quadrilateral. So if we look at this first one, this has four sides. So no matter what shape we know, we know it's a square, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about does it have four sides? Yes, so this is a quadrilateral. This triangle does not have the attribute of a quadrilateral because there are three sides, not four. So that one does not make the quadrilateral club. This circle doesn't have four sides, right? So this obviously is not a quadrilateral. And then here we have a trapezoid, although we don't really care about that right now. We're just looking for, does it have four sides? One, two, three, four, yes. So we had two different quadrilaterals in this group. So this question says, Mr. Stazen drew a shape that they named Mr. Gorgon. This shape was a quadrilateral that had four congruent sides, but no square corners. What shape was Mr. Gorgon? So for this question right here, they're giving me the attributes that my shape has to have. It has to be a quadrilateral, right? Which means it has to be a polygon with four sides and then has to have four congruent sides. So all the sides have to be the same. And then there are no square corners. Okay, so I know that four congruent sides is either going to make it a square, right? And that's not a good square. Or a rhombus. Okay, and again, probably not a great rhombus, but I did my best. And then the last attribute it said was no square corners. So a square has four square corners. So that doesn't work. So the shape they were looking for is a rhombus, okay? When they give you questions like this, think about the attributes they're giving you and then compare them to what you know about each shape. For the challenge zone. I want you to go ahead and pause this video and try this question after I explain it to you and then you can check your answer. It says, how, how are a square and rhombus alike and different. So you're gonna write the attributes in the Venn diagram. Start with the attributes that they have in common and then anything that's different about them, right? You write in their respective circles, just like a Venn diagram, you know how to do it. And then push play and we can check your answer. So the things they have in common, they each have four sides, which make them a quadrilateral. They also have four congruent sides. Both a square and a rhombus have four congruent sides and they have two pairs of sides that will never meet. They are quadrilaterals because they have four sides. They're parallelograms because they have two pairs of sides that will never meet. And then they're special because they each have four congruent sides, four sides that are the exact same. What makes them different though, is a square has to have four square corners and a rhombus has no square corners. That's what makes them different. If you notice, red and blue make purple. That's why the purple's in the middle. I don't wanna brag. So if you don't understand this challenge zone question yet, do not worry about it, right? It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. This is the challenge zone. This is supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to push your thinking and make you better each and every day. Thank you so much for checking us out today. I really appreciate you watching our Instructor Beats lesson. As always, please like and subscribe. You can check out our other geometry lessons or any other lessons and songs that we have. We love to have you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Again, thank you so much. Instruct the Beats, out.